Good morning guys and welcome to Luxembourg. We're starting this video off with, in my opinion, what makes Luxembourg super unique when comparing to the rest of Europe. We're staying a little bit outside of Luxembourg City for two reasons. One, because it's really expensive. But two, public transportation is completely free within the borders of Luxembourg. As Hannah said, Luxembourg's public transportation is completely free. It's been this way since March 2020, and the change came mostly due to traffic congestion. Luxembourg is very multicultural, and its workforce consists of Luxembourg residents, as well as people who drive in every day from Belgium, France, and Germany. All that traffic makes for extreme traffic congestion on the roadways, and in order to combat that, the government in Luxembourg decided to make public transportation completely free within the country's borders in an effort to incentivize their people to leave their cars at home and clear up the roadways as much as possible. Obviously this is great news if you're a traveler like us and it allows us to stay about 30 minutes outside of the city of Luxembourg in a small Airbnb that was much cheaper than the center part of town. I hope I'm not jinxing it but I haven't seen anybody really walking through the street so maybe we have Luxembourg all to ourselves today who knows. Up first is coffee as usual and we're headed to a place called Conrad Coffee and Bar and this place is good at any time of day. In the morning you can find coffee, cakes, and then in the evening it transforms into a bar with like some musicians playing so you can hang out with friends, get some drinks. It's really good for everything. It's strong. We also read online that Conrad Cafe and Bar has excellent cake. We're gonna pass on the cake for now, but if you ever come here, make sure to stop by Conrad and get the cake. It looks incredible. But thank you. One great thing about Luxembourg is it's not very big at all, especially Luxembourg City. The entire country is around 51 miles long and 35 miles wide, and the capital is very compact as well. You really only need a full day to explore all of the city and a long weekend to explore all of the country, and that's really easy to do, you know, because public transportation is free here. Since the city itself is so compact, the old town in Luxembourg is also super compact and walkable. There's a ton of winding alleyways, historic buildings, and a few different monuments commemorating historical moments and figures that have shaped Luxembourg into what it is. Within the old town, you'll also find a boatload of shopping options, and there's like H&M, but then there's also Louis Vuitton. If there's one place to have all of these boutique high-end stores, though, it's definitely Luxembourg. This is considered the richest country in the world, and that's mostly due to it being a bit of a tax haven for large private banking companies. So it may not look like it, but plus Guillaume du, I think that's how you say it. If I screwed that up, then I apologize. This is one of the central squares of the entire country. The public square houses Luxembourg City Hall on the southwest part of the square and has the equestrian statue of Grand Duke William II near the center. The square is named after him in honor of his rule from 1840 to 1849. He was responsible for granting the Grand Duchy its first parliamentary constitution. Since the head of the country of Luxembourg is a Grand Duke, it's referred to as a country as a Grand Duchy or Grand Dutch Duchy. I don't know, man. Either way, <laughs> I know that he has a palace that is nearby, so let's go see it. The home of Grand Duke Henry of Luxembourg is called the Grand Ducal Palace. This has served as the home of the Grand Duke or Duchess since 1890, but underwent extensive renovations between 1992 and 1995. You can take a guided tour of the Grand Ducal Palace behind me during the summer months, but we missed it by a few weeks, so we're just going to admire from the outside, which is also very beautiful. So recently we've been deciding to get small, cheap things for lunch uh, because honestly we enjoy our lunch with a view. So we have stopped by a little grocery store and we have gotten about 10 euros worth of food and then a water each. And we are going to go to a place really close by that is known as the most beautiful balcony in Europe. So it's got to be a good view, right? What'd you get? I got some tabbouleh and then we got a pesto sandwich to split. And then Trey got some kind of like Parmesan butter pasta. Today's lunch spot is a place called Chemin de la Corniche, which translates to Walls of the Corniche. A corniche is a road or walkway built on the side of a mountain with the terrain steeply rising on one side and then falling away on the other. This car-free area overlooks the Grund neighborhood and the Alzette Valley and makes for a perfect city walk at any time of the day. Supposedly, it's really beautiful up here at nighttime, so if you're ever over here and you're visiting at night, let us know how it is and see if it's true. 
Another reason why we chose to eat lunch at Chemin de la Corniche is it's right next to our next stop, which is Bach Cosmates, or Casemates, or Casamates. Well, Bach Casemates or Cosmates is uh, closed. So. The official tunnels where you can go see them are closed, but I found a secret way. I guess this is, I mean, this is kind of This is it. basically it. This is what I imagine the inside of it to be. So it doesn't look like we're gonna be able to go inside, but it's basically just like a vast labyrinth of underground tunnels that was built back in, I think 1644 to begin with, and then used as bomb shelters during World War II. So I guess this is a good thing because if we'd have gone down there, we'd have probably gotten lost because it's like 17 kilometers of tunnels. So we'd have gotten lost. I don't think I've explicitly said it, but everywhere that we've gone here in Luxembourg, in the old town of Luxembourg, is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and Bach Cosmates makes up a huge part of that as well. Nearby is a monument that I felt like I had to tell you guys about. It's got a pretty crazy story to it. This is the Monument of Remembrance, or more commonly called Gellefra. This monument was erected in 1923 to commemorate the Luxembourgish soldiers lost during the First World War. However, in 1940, when the Nazis occupied the country, they specifically targeted the monument and removed it with a steamroller. After the war ended, there were plans to re-erect the monument, but there was a bit of an issue. They couldn't find it anywhere. It had been a part of an exhibition on the resistance in 1955, but hadn't been seen since. Oddly enough, a few decades later in 1981, they found fragments of the Golden Lady underneath the main stands of the National Football Stadium. She was then renovated and put back up in this spot in 1985. I'm sure there are probably a lot of stories about statues that have gone missing and then found later, but this kind of fascinates me in the fact that like it was under the main stand of the football stadium. So was it an area of the main stand that people just don't go under? ever for like 30 years? Was it hidden underground? If you know anything, then please let us know in the comments because I'm kind of fascinated by it. Right nearby the Monument of Remembrance is the Notre Dame Cathedral. Y'all seriously didn't think we would go the entire day or Trey could go the entire day without visiting one of these churches, right? No, not at all. <laughs> This is a Roman Catholic cathedral that began construction in 1613 and was built in the late Gothic style. It's free to enter, which made it a no-brainer to add to the itinerary for the day, and supposedly it also has a crypt which contains the remains of former Grand Dukes and Duchesses of Luxembourg. Sign is just not conveniently placed. It's not <laughs> ideal. Now, as we've said a few times, Luxembourg isn't very cheap at all, but there are ways that you can make it a little cheaper. I think dinner might blow that out of the water though. We're not at the cheapest place, but we were really focused on trying to find traditional Luxembourgish food. And we had a bit of difficulty, but we're at a place right now called Brasserie du Circle. The food's a little bit on the expensive side, but we asked ourselves the question of when we're gonna be back here. And we really don't know, to be honest with you. So we figured we might as well pull the trigger on a nice meal since we kept things cheap at lunch. We didn't really pay to go inside anything. Public transit was free. We've only spent money on coffees and lunch today. And this is for you. Amazing. Oh, oh my, my gosh. gosh. That looks so good. Wow. Nice meal. Thank you. <laughs> I got the, the Kindle for me. I've read online that it's not in many blogs around Luxembourg, like the best things to eat, but it is a very traditional Luxembourg dish. I got the uh, Luxembourgish beef. As we said, this meal is not the cheapest, but I feel like we're definitely getting our money's worth. Holy smokes, this is incredible. Oh, push? Okay. Ah, there we go, thank you. <laughs> All right. Dinner was uh, Heavy. incredible. We're going to film dessert. Dessert is going to be, uh, what's it known for? Chocolate spoons. And it's also known for its white wine, specifically the Cremant, I believe is what it's called. So it turns out I was wrong. I was told two things and both are very valid, but <laughs> I got them both thinking they would kind of like mesh together and they don't. 
This is a chocolate spoon. And the chocolate spoon is not a truffle. It is meant to go in a cup of hot milk that you mix around and it's like hot chocolate. This is crema. It's a bubbly white wine that they're known for in Luxembourg and it comes with a truffle. But I thought this was a truffle. We did not have chocolate house on our list until an hour and a half ago when Hannah was like, oh, we need to go there. So uh, this was definitely a worthy stop, but I ate too much for dinner and I'm stuffed. Mistakes were made, you live and you learn. Cheers. Before we arrived in Luxembourg, we'd heard about how crazy expensive it was. We'd also heard other things about how it wasn't really worth the trip from Belgium, France, or Germany. But when we found really cheap flights here from Milan, we felt like it was a sign that we had to come check it out ourselves. While Luxembourg is definitely on the pricier side, there are ways to offset that. We're staying for five nights and only filming once, so staying outside of the city center was an easy decision for us, and the free public transportation made it a no-brainer. No matter how pricey a place may be, there's almost always a way around it. For me, this is one of my favorite countries we visited all year, and it's not because it's super fancy or anything, but because it allows you the opportunity to get to know it a little bit better and easier than everywhere else. It kind of feels like it welcomes you into it, and when you're thousands of miles away from home, that's always a great feeling. Feeling. 